Hallelujah. Hallelujah, family. It's great to be in the land of the living. Hallelujah. 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 It's definitely the Shabbat where we can enter into his rest. Hallelujah. 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 You be refreshed today. Hallelujah. Let us greet one another in the fear of Yah and the beauty of holiness.
Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Bless you, Father. Glory. We praise your holy and righteous name. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh your Elohim, which brought you Elohim and Mitzrayim, and all thus the slavery. You have none of the mighty ones against my face. You do not make for yourself a carved image, or in any likeness of that, which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them, or serve them. For I, Yahweh your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children, to the third and fourth of those who hate me, but show on the incoming commitment to the thousands of those who love me are my, are my commands. You do not bring the name of Yahweh to naught, for Yahweh does not live in punishment who brings the name to naught. Remember the Shabbat to set it apart. Six days you able to do all your work, seven days of Sabbath of Yahweh It didn't want to do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male slave, nor your female slave, nor your cattle, nor your stranger within your gates. For in six days, you the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that's in them, and the rest of the seventh day, the Rabbi left the Sabbath day and set it apart. Respect your father and mother, so that your days are prolonged upon the soil, which Elohim has given you. You do not murder, you do not commit adultery, you do not steal, you do not bear false witness against your neighbor, you do not cover your neighbor's house, you do not cover your neighbor's wife, nor his male slave, nor his female slave, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or whatsoever belongs to your neighbors. Can y'all hear me? All right. Most of all, y'all, we do thank you for all things. We just humble ask request, magnificent name, y'all, sure, you'll speak to us, your words of truth. Pray these sins sink deep down in our hearts in the magnificent name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. All right. What we got going on here, I've seen it before. And he's holding his churches where the women start trying to take over prophecies and starting trying to lead and guide it. And a lot of this shit ain't prophecies. A lot of this is prophesying coming from your own damn vain ass minds. That's exactly what's happening. Now, as when Ashley spoke, and Sister Deidre would be uh, interpreting, that's the way that the tongue should be going. That's where it should happen. And when we got y'all doing all this talking right here, this ain't y'all. Y'all don't do all this talking. Ain't never had, did all this talking, never will. He says a few things and he's done with it. When you go read in the book of Revelations, the Most High God would often say to the seven churches what they done good, what they done right, then he would tell them what they done wrong. You follow? And all we ever get is blasting. There's got to be a few righteous in here doing something right. Besides all this judgment, there's always mercy which rejoices, or judgment, or mercy rejoices against judgment. All right, so that's the reason why I shut it down. And if it would have kept going, I knew it wasn't y'all then. Does that make sense? And we're going to go over this for a second, all right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Uh, them chapter 12. I should have brought my Bible here today, man. You should have it walking on me. You got your food. Everybody carries cell phones nowadays. That's where the Bibles are, ain't they? It'd be bad when you sit up here and do it. You can't even see it. Does that mean I'm getting old? You won't agree with that, too, ain't you? Uh, this looks just like my Bible. Looks just like it. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> it's bad when you can't even hardly see what chapter you're in. Anybody ever do that besides me? All right, First Corinthians 14. What did I say, 12? All right. Let's read this. Y'all ready? I'm going to start at the first verse so we can get it in context, okay? Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man but unto Yah. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men unto edification, exhortation, and comfort. And he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth who? Himself. 
but he that prophesies edify for what? So if the prophesies come, it's supposed to edify the church, is that right? But I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesy, because you ain't never got to worry about Christians or Hebrew Israelites ever reading this chapter. But rather uh, prophesy, but for greater is he that prophesy than he that speaketh with tongues, except that he may interpret that the church may receive edification. Now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall it profit you, except I speak? To you, either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. And even things without life giving sound, whether piped or harp, I'm getting a lot of ringing up here. Except they give a distinction in sound, how shall it be known what is piped or harp? For if the trumpet given an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to battle? So likewise, ye, except ye utter by tongue words easily to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken, for you shall speak into there? There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them without signification. Now, therefore, no, therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. Even so, ye... For as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, this is what we're going to slow down at. Even so, if you're zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel to the edifying of the assembly. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in the unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray uh, with my spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shall he that occupied the room of the unlearned say amen? And at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest. For verily thou givest thanks, but the well, but the other is not edified. Now, I thank my Yah that I speak in tongues more than y'all. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in unknown tongue. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. In the law, it is written, with men of other tongues and with other lips what I speak unto these people, and yet for all that Will they not hear me say of y'all? Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not to them that believe it not, but for them which believe. If therefore the whole assembly come together in one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? But if all prophesy, they are come, look at this, uh, in the uh, one that believeth not or unlearned, he is convinced of all and he is judge of all. And thus are the secrets of the hearts uh, manifested. So falling down on his face, he will worship Yah and report that Yah is in you of the truth. How, be it, how is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you have a song, have a doctrine, have a tongue, have a revelation, have an interpretation, let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most three, and that by course, and let one interpret. If you got one interpreting and the other one is overstepping, you got confusion. Is that making sense? Anytime you are so filled with the spirit that you can't control yourself, then you ain't filled with the right spirit. At that time, is it making sense? If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at most three, that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to Yah. See, a lot of times when Mother Carol was started, because there will usually be nobody interpreted. The way it should be working is one would speak in tongues and the other and somebody else would interpret what the tongues meant. 
If you're speaking in tongues and you're interpreting the same thing, you're speaking to yourself. Does this make sense? So if anybody is speaking in tongues, it should be an interpretation. If it's coming from you, then you can speak it to yourself. If it's coming from somebody else, that's when everybody listens when the other person is interpreting the tongues that has already been spoken. Is that making sense? That's the way that the book's supposed to operate. Is this making sense? Let's read on. It tells you clearly, uh, let the prophets speak two or three and let the other judge. And if anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. For ye all, uh, for ye may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. That means that if there's anybody here so spiritual and everything and stuff, and then you got a, a, a man in authority and power and spirit, and he tells you to be quiet and shut up, you shut them and sit down. Because they're subject unto the prophets. And it's not talking about prophets like the prophet Isaiah and the prophet Moses and all that this, all right? For well, y'all's not thought of the confusion, but of peace as in all the assemblies of the saints. And let your women keep silent in the assemblies. And that's not telling you that you have to keep silent, meaning that uh, you can't say amen or can't say hallelujah, or you can't prophesy because it's already said that your sons and daughters will prophesy and they'll see visions and dream dreams. So you have to put it in proper order and content. Is that right? Um, and they're not permitted unto speak, uh, but they are commanded to be under obedience as saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the assembly. Because you see everybody define that today. Women preachers, women speakers, women all over the place, all out of order. You ain't going to tell me that Yah's approving of that. Because he don't approve that. You follow me? So basically all this has to do with having self-control and knowing when Yah is doing it and when he does it, listen to what he says. What? Came the word of Yah from, out from you or came unto you only? If any man think himself a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that are right unto you are the commandments of Yahweh. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak in tongues, let all things be done decency and in order. And that's what I was doing here this morning, getting some order. Y'all hearing that? That's why you got to know what this book says. And that makes sense because he's not the author of confusion. Now, I got in trouble with the old holiness church that I was part of down in Leesville because I rebuked a couple of women for uh, what was getting ready to get cranked up and started here. Because, you know, I guess you got to be willing to be hated if you're going to stand on the truth, though, right? The bishop will be in the back. Next thing you know, they'd be out there prophesying and all these shell of the men just be, I mean, they'd be flying off at the hand all over the place. Like, ho, 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 stop. Right now. You better sit down, woman. That's how I would have to talk to them because they, you know, just rebellious. Of um, course, you know what they're going to do, right? going to go run and tell bishop, on the elder dial. You think I'm carrying the big old run tell bishop on me? <laughs> and then that's what they would do in these Pentecostal churches and holy churches. And then you'll have them, uh, next thing you know, they're taking over. And, and next thing you know, people don't even know the voice of Yah anymore. Because they're waiting to hear it for some prophecy. And we had it some time ago during the feast when Sister Carol. Mother Carol was speaking in tongues, and Brother Scott was speaking in tongues, but then, uh, no, Brother Scott was speaking in tongues, and Carol interpreted. It was one way or the other, I can't remember. And then Brother Scott came and wrote down, because he couldn't hear what she said. So he wrote down what he got in his spirit, and bought it to me the next day, and it was almost verbatim of what Mother Carol had said. This making sense? So the key in all this is let all things be done decency and in order. Everybody edify? Oh, it make no difference to me if you're not, but it's true. <laughs> Glory to the king. All right. Let's get on this thing here just for a second. Y'all know that um, 
people put a threat out on our Indiana assembly up there, right? And I called that sheriff's department and, and left him a few of my words. And, um, and we also made, I also made a video to let them know that we coming. If you understand what I mean, we don't get shit right. So we got a message from Sister Chris that um, they done cooled their heels up there in Indiana. If you understand what I mean. Because given the present climate that we're here in America are facing, you know, it's not too intelligent for people to be making threats on other people. Well, last night they said on the broadcast, and check this out, they said, well, uh, we thought that y'all was buying all this land because y'all was going to grow some dope on it or something like that. What concern is it of yours if somebody want to grow some dope on their land and then they get um, the, the ATF or everybody else come down and, and on them and throw them in jail? Who made you the judge, the jury, and executioner? Ain't that old saying in the world, mind your own business? Mind your own damn business. Ain't it? Mind your own business. So these people act like they're concerned, so much concerned, that when you read the comments, check this out. Look at the sentiment and the mindset. We better go down there and do something about them and leave no witnesses. Because if we don't, they're going to be coming for us. Now, wait a minute. Think about that for a second. And see, and this is where I often go back. You need to know history in this country. Now, let me get this right, because I know everybody's listening out there. I'm going to draw this thing out, okay? So you're going to have to use your abstract mind. We're professionals at that. Because we have been reared in this society. The melanated people got taken over here on slave ships because the Africans sold us to the Europeans. I'm going to keep it, keep it vanilla so we can actually just move on, okay? So we get over here, and even on the ships, we're sodomized, raped, robbed, brutalized. Families, mothers have children ripped from them like you would take a doll from a litter and go sell it to somebody. Think about this now. All right? We getting lynched. We getting beaten. Getting our hands chopped off. Legs chopped off so you can't run. Chains around you. And yet for all this aggression, we the cause and the problems for everything that's going on in America when we had no power or ability to even resist, even fight, totally taken away from us. Now, ever since I've been here in Lafayette, Tennessee, I've received less than a warm welcome from the natives of this land. Now, y'all hear me? We ain't bothered nobody, ain't never bothered nobody. Live a quiet and peaceful life, but for, for that, I get a bunch of white rednecks coming down here that want to call us niggers and every damn thing else under the sun. Call our sisters names that I'm not even going to mention because we got children in here. For what? You know, somebody got to be submitted to Satan, right? There's been a couple of times that I've actually got so upset and stuff, I chased a few of them off. One time I got so damn mad <clears throat> that I chased the bastard off and they were all, it looks like one of these little um, country scenes that you only see in the movies. They pull up all these pickup trucks, snag of two women. No, for real. Four or five bubbles sitting on the porch. The guy jumps out of a truck and runs over there and I had my uh, 45 with a red dot. I put it right between his forehead. I said, y'all come down there again doing some shit like that. There ain't no laws on this book that's going to protect you from me. You know immediately what I did after that? I went straight to the sheriff's department. You know why? Because I knew that they were going to call. Now, mind you, you started the shit with me. You're down here disturbing our peace. And you're going to use the uh, insulation of a public role to say that you can do that. So then when I answer your call, all of a sudden you want to call the police or the sheriff's department on me 
for so-called violating your wrong ass. Now, is that not spiritually retarded? And that's why I keep saying, one day, one day, one of y'all are going to mess up real bad. Believe me, Ranger, I know what I'm doing on this one. You're going to mess up real bad, and I'm going to be there to answer it, too. You get it? They're going to mess up royally. Somebody going to get so damn bold one day that they're actually going to walk on this land and try something. That day, that day, I told you what I was doing. After they see you bleeding out and um, fertilizing our soil with your blood, I'm going to tell your parents to come. I ain't going to call the sheriff's department. Now. They're going to come out here automatically, but I'm going to tell them, let the parents come and get them so I can have a word for them. You next. Because, you know, you go mess around and kill somebody's son or daughter or something like that, acting a fool and stuff, man. They, they get mad. They don't care what they did. And let me tell you, all the white folks something, that's the way it's always been in this country. As long as the white people are oppressing and as long as the white people are the ones who are perpetuating the evil, everything is fine and good. As soon as the black man rises up and starts this, all of a sudden, oh no, we got to do something about this. Because if we don't do something about this, they're going to do something about us. But who's had the evil done against them the whole entire time? Is this making sense? The white folks can ride and the government is with you. The black folks ride and they start coming out with guns. Oh, hell, we got to pass laws, i.e. California. See what I mean? Disproportionate injustice. Well, see, now the world, black, white, Indian, melanated, non-melanated, down the world, especially in America, Somebody, or starting to be everybody, know that something is systemically wrong. It's a system of white supremacy. That don't mean because you're white that you're in the system of white supremacy. That means that there's a white ruling system of elite people that are controlling the masses of people. It's a system of white supremacy. So how in the hell can the, then the blacks in this country be 13% of the population and occupy 85% of the prison population? I just seen it on Facebook the other day, this guy up there, a uh, pedophile, raping all these little boys and girls and stuff, get eight years in prison. A little black girl, she turns around and kills the man that's been uh, uh, raping her. She gets life for defending herself because she's black. The problem is, is when you got white folks that have the voice to be able to speak, they don't say anything. Nobody comes out and condemns it. See, if I'm a black man, and if my people are black doing something wrong, I'm going to flat out tell them you're wrong. I'm not going to sit there and remain silent and be in consent. You ever heard that old saying, silent is a consent to an agreement? That's the reason why I don't trust nobody up here in Lafayette, Tennessee. They know what these people are doing, and yet they stay silent. You get it? There's no condemnation. There's nothing put out by the sheriff's department, anybody telling them you need to leave them folks alone. You understand what I mean? Now, I'm not worried about it. Don't tell them don't leave us alone. It makes no difference to me. But we ain't going back to no damn slavery. It ain't happening. Y'all understand what I mean? But then they politically want you to remember the damn Jews. And remember the Holocaust, but forget, move on from the transatlantic slave trade. What kind of wicked ass attitude is that? Now, let's flip the script. How would you like to have children and then the black folks are the one that's whipping your ass with whips and taking your children away from you and selling them out to the slave masters and the next masters and stuff at the other plantation and then take your wives anytime they want and then go over in, in the back of the horse barn and just have our way with them? 
See, until something becomes personal to you, you'll never really truly get it or understand it. You'll never be able to understand somebody's plight as long as you just keep your head stuck in the sand and you ignore the facts of everything that's going on. Does that make any sense? Injustice is injustice no matter where it is. Wicked is wickedness no matter who, who perpetuates it or who does it. And it makes no difference what skin color or non-skin color they're in. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Does that make any sense? But it's a damn shame when you can go out here and serve in this world's military and then come home and get called every damn name under the sun. Ungrateful, unthankful, unholy. Now, when they made that statement against Daniel Muir and them up in Indiana, when they made that statement, all right, that's because that's what's in their heart. Are y'all hearing me? And they, and they are motivated by fear. That's what causes that type of response. Let's go ahead and annihilate everybody in our past because we're scared. Kill them because we're scared. Kill them because we're scared. And keep on killing them because we're scared. Now, in case you don't know what's going on in this world, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag, the proverbial cat out of the bag. Y'all remember years ago I said that we done went over there in the Middle East and done just stirred up a hornet's nest? Y'all remember that? These people have been living like this for centuries. You get it? No, stirred up a hornet's nest. Now, in case y'all didn't know what this is, is this system of white racism. It ain't only just in America. It's on every country in the world where the white people are ruling and dominating because it's their time to rule. Is this making sense? There was a time when the black man ruled the whole earth. Now it's the time for the white man to rule. And he's ruling. Are y'all getting this? And he's ruling. I told you, wherever you see this eagle on these flags, you know, you ever heard of WWE? Where they act like at each other's throat and stuff? Remember that? Are you following? Anybody heard of King Leopold? Remember how he went down to the Congo? And what he was doing to the Africans down there? You get it? Anybody know about Stalin? Hitler? Mussolini? Y'all know or heard about all these people? Are you following me? You know the only reason why they're the, the worst murderers in history? Because they were killing other white people. But anytime somebody go and kill somebody black or, or brown skin or melanated, no, they're celebrated. No evil has been done. So don't tell me I'm making this about racism when y'all starting all the shit with us. We just believe in answering, if you understand what I mean. But the day is coming that once that flag goes up, what that man did say, you better beware and fear with dread and terror. So if you turn somebody like me and Gideon and Frogman or loose, we'll raise hell. I already done told straightway what the plan was when we end up in a world without rule of law, and we know it. I hope y'all ain't discussing it out there with nobody else. I don't want them to know our plans. But even if you did, I got a plan B anyway. Because I'm smarter than that. But war is coming. The white man is trying to rule the whole entire earth and he's trying to kill the war is white against brown and melanated people all across this land. You don't believe me? Watch this. China right now is killing pastors, murdering people who will not worship the emperor. Y'all remember Tiananmen Square? 
And since America is so interested in justice and equality of everybody, why ain't, he, why ain't we over interfering with the Chinese and their affairs if we're so concerned? Why ain't we over there rescuing them? Is this making sense? This is a dog and pony show. This is exactly what it is. And I told you, the one thing that this world fears is not only a, a, a black man with a gun, but an educated black man has got a mouth to know how to speak. <laughs> Malcolm X said to the black man, exactly what he said. He said, you dance too much and you sing too much. You need to stop singing and start swinging. You march too much. We shall overcome and ain't a damn thing gonna change. You have to actually learn from the people who you've been in captivity to. Did America turn a blind eye to England? Did they say we need to love each other? When Cornwallis came over here and start raging war on this side of the, the world with the Americans. We went to war because of one cent. One cent. One cent. We went to a damn war for that. Now we're taxed up with a 49 cent. And we're looking for the next person to vote in office. What the hell's wrong with us? <laughs> now Joe Biden has put a whore on the ticket. An adulterer. A known adulterer on the ticket. Miss don't know who the hell the color she is. Kamala Harris. She married to a Jew. She's also married to downtown Willie Brown too. That's how she got into politics. She slept away into politics. Y'all ain't never heard Joe Biden speak lately? He sound like us after we done had about four or five drinks in us. And that's his common speech. This book has got one leg on the earth, the other one in the grave. You, think, you know who's going to be the next president then if, if, if the Democrats get elected? A so-called woman masquerading as if she's black who incarcerated every single black person she could. <laughs> Disproportionately. That's American justice. You see, the wicked of the earth is ruling this world. That's why I tell y'all, the one thing y'all better get in y'all head is, they ain't letting them take your guns. The day, the day they come for your guns and you freely give it to them, that's when you have lost liberty and true freedom. And you don't deserve any. Because you, hey, what are you going to do? You're going to go to a, a gunfight with a knife? Look what they do in Australia right now. Y'all paying attention to the news? I ain't been talking about it much lately. What they doing? Look what they doing in Australia. Oh, because it's COVID-19 now. They are oppressing the living hell out of them. And the people don't have no ability to resist. None. This is the type of world we're living in. And it ain't going to get better. It's going from bad to worse. So knowing the environment, you need to prepare your heart and your mind. You need to make sure, spiritually more than anything, you got a right relationship with the Father. And I should have said this last, we should have said this last night, Ranger. If you ain't willing to live for your brothers and sisters, live while dying, you ain't going to die for them. You ain't going to die for a sister you offended at or a brother you're bitter against. You out of your mind. You ain't going to do it. <laughs> no, you're not. 
that spirit will pop up and you'll say, hmm, too bad. You'll step on and step over and be glad you're alive. Now the book says no greater love than this than a man lay down his life for his And Daniel and them, they own some serious stuff up there. Anytime a brother get offended, they call him weak. Soft. Soft. And Daniel says, shall we sing the song? Shall we sing the song? Something about his sensitivity. Y'all know the song? And what they do is when, because a man ain't supposed to be weak like that. Responding out of their damn emotions. And as soon as they get offended, all of them pile on. Look at him, soft, look, soft, look how weak he is. That's, that's when he get offended at another brother. Some of you are so passionate when you get offended. All in. But then when you at fault, we ain't supposed to be offended. We're supposed to just take it patiently. We're supposed to exercise restraint and understanding. You get offended, I demand justice, damn it. You're a hypocrite, all of you. So them brothers are doing good. Maybe you sisters need to come up with a song. Y'all sing better than we do anyway. Soon as sister get offended, start waving, get that sensitivity going. That way everybody knows who's soft, who's weak, spiritually. See, when they're doing this, that's alarm go up and they let everybody know, look. And then they end it by pointing directly at them. That's love. That's real love. So this is the world we find ourselves in. And it's amazing that the Bible teaches us that we need to try to make sure we follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see Yah. Ain't that what the book says? So I hope we learned something. I made a video and then everybody said, oh, I'm seeing a different side of Pastor Dowd. And no, you've seen always seen the same side. Always have seen the same side. You know you need to change. Why prolong it? Change. <laughs> huh? Change. It sure is nice when everybody's pleasant, isn't it? Isn't it? Can't everybody be pleasant when you all messed up and disturbed, though. But anyway, that's the history of America. And now the real history is coming out. Now people are getting offended that all the Confederate heroes, they dead in their grave. You think they care about a statue? But it means something to them. Has the three percenters ever been labeled a hate group yet? How about the Ku Klux Klan? Have they made it to the hate group yet? Anybody know? No, 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 no. Do you know, Ranger? They finally made it. When they make it? 2019? Yeah, in the 50s. Oh, the FBI did it? Yeah, the FBI can't make laws, though. See what they did to Nick Cannon? See what they did to him? He came out and told the truth about the Jews, and now look at him. Why don't these talk shows, all these, you notice all these talk shows during the day is mostly women bumping their guns? Hey, you people out there on The View, invite me. Wouldn't it be a good invite? 
Invite me. I'll come on your, I'll come on your show. And we, and we can talk about the LGBTQ. See if I'm going to do any damn recanting. Now we are understanding what our prophets was all about when they had to get up there and prophesy in the face and in the midst of adversity. We're facing the same climate today. Who's going to be the man or woman of truth that's going to stand up for righteousness and truth? It's easy to do it when we're sitting in here. But the real battle is when you get out there. We can all be encouraged in here. But what about when you get out there? As the old saying goes, send me, I'll go. But if you ever think I'm going to apologize for my statement for the Jews and these damn faggots running around here on this earth, you out of your damn mind. Our children ain't going to grow up confused. They're going to know right from wrong. And our little boys, they're going to grow up warriors. And you women, shut up and leave me alone when I'm dealing with these little boys. Oh, they too young. Shut up, they know what they're doing. I'm a little rougher with the boys. I, I play with them. Every once in a while, I smile at them and stuff like that. I give them a little hug and stuff. Hug the girls. And how y'all doing, little girl? Little girl coming up. Little boys, what you doing, boy? Now they're learning when to turn it on and when not to turn it on. Because all the parents, they'll tell you around here, man, I fight all the boys all the time. Well, they fight me all the time. They're just learning now, okay, now it's time to fight. Now it ain't the time to fight. They got to have that mentality instilled in them from their youth. Because if not, they're going to be at least sorry, sissy. They, they, they're going to be wearing fingernail polish and being confused and wondering if they're a female or not. They keep listening to what's going on out here. Does this make any sense? Even, even, even when I have mine, he, he gonna, boy, he's going to go through it. But he ain't going to be confused. I can promise you that. He's going to be a man. Get it? If it's a little girl, she's going to be a, a good woman. See, you men... Instead of trying to raise these daughters, when well, some of you ain't pouring nothing into them, you're trying to keep them around your house forever. You're trying to get them to find a husband like you. You're supposed to be preparing these daughters for a man. And if you ain't a man, you can't prepare your daughters for a man. You women, you ain't got time to cry over spilled milk because you've been foolish all your damn life. You know what's right is sitting right in front of you. Pour good into them so we can get about raising a righteous seed. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? We can get this thing going right. I got a little bit more hope for the next generation on community, but that's just a little. Because as soon as they get a taste of this world, we always compromise when somebody comes from the world untransformed, unregenerated. Better watch them. Don't set up and raise your daughters to be looking for a man like you. Be looking for somebody better. Period, point blank. Everybody doing all right? Yeah. Good, we'll get on with the word here. Now that everybody offended, good, I don't care. 
How people fall away after coming to the knowledge of the truth. Remember, the attack will always come from where? Always come from within. Do not think for one minute because you're here that you're safe. The accuser uses those who are around us, but Yah will destroy them like he has done with all others. You had better concentrate on saving yourselves. 2 Peter 2.7 says, and remember this, he was talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, how he was destroying them, and he says, and delivered Lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. All right? If you ever notice, there are people that leave here, and you don't ever hear, uh, hear us calling their name. You know why? Because they left. They're not, they're not doing like these people with these filthy conversations. They leave, and then they want to speak against us. Somebody got to be the accuser. And believe it or not, Peter spent a long amount of time talking about this type of spirit that goes on. It's just that when we read it, we don't equate it to the time that we're living in right now and our situation. There are people that leave and they turn the page and they move on. You never hear from them again. Then there are other people that leave and boy, they don't ever turn the page. Unresolved issues. Bitter. Whole nine yards. So there are people that has been equated to Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot. Lot, being the righteous, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing, look what he did. He vexed his righteous what? Soul from day to day. Now, isn't it much better to be around the saints than to be around the ants? Now, you think about this. If his soul was vexed at Sodom and Gomorrah every single day, then you ask us, we need to ask ourselves a question. How is it that we can go out here and soak and immerse ourselves and rub elbows to these people and our soul ain't vexed? One bit, it ain't vexed. Matter of fact, we love going to and fro. Think about that. See his condition and see what our condition is today? Satan is trying to get you with their unlawful deeds. The master knoweth how to deliver the godly out of what? That's why you can't sit up and tell me that the most I want you in these cities. Well, you're tempted at all the time. And to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. Now, we're going to go over this next verse so that we can see how Satan works. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh. Chiefly principle in the lust of uncleanliness notice they're walking out the flesh but in their lusting in uncleanliness you get this look at this look at this and despise governments they despise the very order and it's not talking about the governments in the world when you read anything about the book when it concerning order it's talking about Yah's order in his government his kingdom his people his rule Romans 13 wasn't written for, for the civil law. It's written here and every other place where, where the Israelites are. You get it? They despise the government. They despise the authority, the chain of command. Presumptuous are they. Presumptuous, we'll get to it, which is a daring person. All right? Self-will. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. You get that? Lust. Longing for that which is forbidden. Desire after. Uncleanliness. Moral con contamination. They despise governments. Presumptuous are they. Self-will. Look at the word despise. To think against, that is, disesteem despise. Whereas one time you esteemed, now they, now they disesteemed amongst you. That's why he kept mentioning about Leslie last night, because it's still in the spirit. See, we would be up in Green Bay. He'd be sitting at that table around us, crying alligator tears. Man, you brothers are righteous, man. 
Man, you brothers, you remember that elder? Man, I love y'all, man. Man, y'all Israel, man. We love y'all. We just love y'all. What? Esau sought repentance carefully with tears and couldn't get it. So don't y'all take it personal. You start crying, we don't cry along with you. You having a moment, not us. <laughs> Does this make sense? Governments, masteries, rules, dominion. Governments, presumptuous, a daring, audacious, reckless, and bold, brazen man. You hear that? Look at this. Ask yourself a question. Who do you know that speaks against your pastor or leaders? You see what I mean? <laughs> I don't miss that none because he live on community. You see what I mean? He said they ain't going to talk to him. <laughs> Who do you know that is not fond of me or, or, or the one that is feeding you? Self-willed. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Now watch this. This is how bold man is today. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, do we not agree that angels are greater in power and might? Look at this. They bring not railing accusation against them before the master. They dare not even accuse. Talking about the holy angels. But these, talking about men, naturally, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, look what they do. Speak evil things that they understand not. You get it? That's why we have to use these practical examples. Y'all heard what Kabir said, right? Kabir said that Leslie's all upset because then he said, I was, I was talking to his wife. Do anybody remember? We played Kabir's video. He said, I was talking to Myron's wife. Is that right? Said I was turning her against him. Now, wait a minute. Both y'all called me. And you spent more time talking with Brother Galen and Anyala than you did me. They had separated because they were beating the hell out of each other. She goes full term with a baby. And I told him, I said, if y'all don't stop this damn nonsense, man, that baby is at jeopardy with all this hell y'all raising. They made a decision to depart from each other. She goes to the hospital to have the baby, and the baby is born dead. Then, or, or, or he was born but then died shortly after. How did the doctor know the baby died of a broken heart with all this drama and all this hell going on? You don't think that's a hard hit? See, don't tell me you're so demonically infused full of these damn spirits that you can't stop what you're doing for the baby's sake. But you still got to keep that fight up. Nobody giving any ground. Nobody conceding anything. And as a result, you lose a baby from it. I said, man, y'all so damn bad for each other, man. Y'all need to stay apart, but I'm breaking them up. I didn't hear nothing from none of them. Next thing I know, they back together again. Myron and his wife. What's her name? Lashonda. You get this? Next thing you know, I get a phone call from LaShonda months later. I need to speak with Pastor Dow. It shows how long did it take me before I called her back? Three weeks. I'm really interested in talking to somebody's wife. Three weeks. She said, I ain't got nothing bad to say, nothing to say like y'all. I just want to be able to come back to the ministry. Put in contact with some sisters, tell her to get on Marco Polo. Get it? Still ain't seen her yet, though. But she told me, we are divorced, both naturally and spiritually. He's gone his way, I've gone my way. 
and then this dumbass Leslie sticking his nose in things that he don't even understand. See, that's what this scripture is all about right here. Instead of minding your own damn business, and Kabir did a right job by pressing him and saying, what about your brother pastor? Ain't I your brother? Brother? What about your brother? See, they were offended. And they went away offended. And as soon as somebody spit something in their ear to solidify that offense, they went after it. And then started accusing me of things they don't even know. And Brother Galen and Sister Anyala even got more of the skinny. So now you're looking at an example of what this is talking about. Well, they're speaking evil things they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. See what I mean? You see, I've been lately been trying to tell y'all how important it is, especially us in Israel. You know we're going to be judged more than the world, right? You know judgment first starts at the house of Yah. And if it's going to start at us, you know what's going to be the end of the sinner and the ungodly? And Yah, he don't play with us. And you're going to be judged for every, for every role you have. You're going to be judged as a husband. You're going to be judged as a father. You're going to be judged as a brother. You got all these hats right here you're going to be judged by. And you better make sure you're perfecting every one of them in the fear of Yah. Wife, woman, daughter, mother, you're going to be judged on those roles. You better be doing those roles in the fear of Yah to the best of your ability. And you better be dying out. And then I will preface this by saying, women, have y'all not read the book and understand all these examples from these great cloud of witnesses in front of us? I remember that somebody was on a journey and the father came seeking his idol because his wife was sitting on the mule. It was during her time of the month. And he was so sure that his wife or anybody in the camp wouldn't steal nothing from him. He said, if you find anybody here who has got anything of yours, if they have taken anything, I pray that they die to death. Guess who died? Don't that tell you how much authority your husband got over you, woman? David's wife. He up here dancing before the Ark of the Covenant. And she had the unmitigated gall to sit up there and try to actually blast him. What I did, I did for y'all. Oh, how you like living the rest of your life and not having a child? Why everybody else is. Miriam, oh, I'm a prophetess. I'm all this and all that. And you gonna speak against Moses? And Aaron, you're going to spin in your weak brother here to get him do the same thing. You three, come on up to the door of the tabernacle. You ever notice that there was no back talk? I told y'all, if y'all think that when we get up before the Most High Yah, we're going to be trading words, you out of your damn mind. There, won't, there was only going to be one side that's going to say anything. That's it. And any time the Most High Yah required men to answer them, that was the first thing they did was put their hand over their mouth. Wouldn't say anything for fear that they may have to, somebody may have to surgically remove it out of their mouth. We don't lost the fear of Yah. We literally have lost the fear of Yah. And the Bible says, and all these things were written for our admonition. All these things were written for our learning. So how is it that it's written for? I have ministry and I learn it, but it ain't written for yours. A woman goes to vow, vow. You can't even fast or make a vow without the approval of your head. I'm going straight to the Father like hell you are. You're getting mad at your husband. I'm going to pray. Heaven's is brass. It ain't going no higher than the ceiling. You're all spiritual. You're all religious. 
and think that the most high y'all is going to hear you when you are out of order. And then you stupid men, let them get away with it. Straightway, y'all, men, you got a good sign. If you're in a house with a contentious woman, just go stand on top of the roof so everybody know what's going on. Just stand up there. You ain't got to ask what he's doing. You already know. Because the one thing that women don't want is they don't want to be exposed in front of everybody for how wicked they are. They want to do that trash in hell with you, but they don't want, they want to paint a picture with everybody else that they're all the glamour queen. They're the Miss Spiritual Holy. Nobody ever wants to come to judgment. Nobody ever wants to bring two or three witnesses. Nobody wants to be right. And then going back again, it says, because there were no judges in the land, Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now the book is done fast forward and says, if you're going to judge a matter of anything, set them that are least esteemed to judge. Because you give these people that Mr. Know-it-all, Mrs. Know-it-all, and all this, well, let's just get somebody that ain't so esteemed and let's set them in order and let them judge. If you're afraid of judgment, at least you'll get a fair shake then, wouldn't you? And, and we're getting ready. At least we're supposed to be preparing ourselves for the Holy One of Israel. You better be producing and doing a hell of a lot better than what you're doing now. Y'all getting this? These are real accounts that we just ignore. What was, our, what was, what was we hearing this morning? Psalm 59? Teach, read Psalm 59, start at verse 5. Y'all ready for this? I was listening to, as I was going in the bedroom, Carol had it playing Psalm 59. And I said, well, I be there. Listen to King David. Listen to David. And who is David? A man right after Yah's own heart. I said, listen to him talk. Read. Thou therefore, O Yahweh Elohim of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, awake to visit all the heathen. To do what? To visit all the heathen. David is asking the Most High Yah to awake, to visit all of the heathen. Now let me stop you for a second. You understand how powerful your words are? If your, power, your words are so powerful that you can cast out devils, just because you don't see something manifest like a demon in front of you, you understand how powerful your words are when you start speaking them? Huh? Read on. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. This David, be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. Come on. Say la. They return at evening. They what? They return at evening. Come on. They make, make a noise like a dog. They make a noise like a what? A dog. Come on. They go round about the city. Behold, they belch out with their mouth. Swords are in their lips. Swords are in their what? Lips. Lips. Swords. Come on. For who, say they, doth hear? But thou, O Yahweh, shalt laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the heathen in derision. You hear that? That's what's going to be the end of them. But pay attention particularly what he's saying. And you think the Most High Yah is not going to listen to him? He's going to hear him. Don't think for one minute that because you're a saint and you keep the commandments and you fill with the Holy Spirit that y'all won't damn you. Remember what the book says. The gifts and the callings of y'all are without repentance. Let's prove this. 
Did not the Most High Yah make King Saul the first king in Israel? Did he not take his spirit from him? Did he remove his kingship though? He stayed a king till the day he died. In other words, the gift and the calling that God gave him, Yah gave him, he kept it. Even in that wicked state. And Yah anointed another king while he was king. Oh, but he's not interfering in the affairs of man today, is he? He's all up in our affairs. Is that not a fearful thing? And Saul got it because he would have been a perfect king for some of y'all. You'd have been glad to pick him because he's all for you. All for you. Saul was a people's person. He put you before Yah. Thinking about your livelihood, your provisions. Rather than doing and performing the word of Yah. Just the man you women want. David, you're like, uh uh. I may go to war and he might be after my wife. First thing in your mind. And yet he's the one that y'all, that you're going to see y'all still sitting on his throne and Saul ain't going to be nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. I mean, didn't the most high y'all give a warning to Solomon? Through David, he says, you perform all the commandments, just like your father did. And you love him. If not, I'm going to tell you what the most high y'all going to do to you. See, they always give the everything you should be doing at the end. This is what's going to happen if you turn. And that's what we need to be hearing. See, we're, we're presumptuous in here. We're daring. We're sitting here coming before him as his people. We look like his people, talk like his people. At times, when we're in front of each other, act like his people. And you don't see all these people year after year after year. Y'all brings them in and y'all takes them out. Year after year. And we've gotten to the point that we've done a relaxed adjustment of y'all. When we see somebody sitting there that look like I'm telling you, Leslie would have fooled everybody. There are certain spirits about certain men that if you have any spiritual discernment, you know that ain't something ain't right. You just have a hope that they would make it. But you look, something just ain't right, man. They just don't get it. Y'all seen brothers like that? And you hope they again, hope they again. It's like, man, this don't look like these people are ever going to get it. I had Brother Reynolds call me up and make a petition to ask if D. Jerry can come back to the assembly. I still ain't said nothing to him. Anybody ever heard D. Jerry call me father? Didn't he, didn't he consider me as his father, his spiritual father? Didn't he? If you're a prodigal son, you don't go out there to nobody else asking to come back. We so damn out of order in every damn thing we do today. And he had more grace than me and you sitting here. He lived on a community at one time. Then lived at a homestead. Been on ministry trips. We used to fly him around and take him everywhere with us because of his ability with media. First thing he does when he leaves here, go make video with Ron Dalton. I just told Ron Donald, you ain't serious enough, man. You're not telling us. You may be telling all these people something, but you're not telling us nothing we ain't already heard. What you're talking about, man, we did that in the 2000s, early 2000s. We done since moved on. We still talk about it. It ain't no ooh and ah warp for us. 
But what you're doing is not preparing the people. People being uh, informed, educated. That ain't preparing people for what's coming. The simplest thing in the world, grow your own food. People are having difficulty doing that. Now you can't even find a cannon jar. Who would ever thought a cannon jar would be a hot commodity? Now you got jars, but you can't find the lids. And what is the beast system going to do like he always did from the very beginning? Control the food. And we got all this from the very beginning, from Adam and Eve, for yourself. And we think that we're going to pass by all of that. The stage we better be, talking about us Israel that are prepared, we better be worried about the murmuring and the complaining. That's what better be at the forefront of our minds. Who'd ever thought that Cora, Dathan, and Abiram would be sitting out there Murmuring against Moses. There we go again. And not only because of his, their murmurings, it not only caused them to get swallowed up alive and get a one-way ticket to the pit, but everything that appertained to them, including the women, the children, the relatives, everything, the servants, they all went alive to the pit. Now we're beginning to get the mind of y'all. We got to get a hell of a lot more serious with this. See, so this is what's going on. See, what D. Jerry was doing, he had a little hustle, made a lot of money. Now COVID-19 done hit. You can't go hustle and make no money now because the bars are closed. See, so everything you trusted in, when you was in full strength, the ground beneath your feet done gave way. And you don't think that the most high God will put a plug on us too? He's no respect of persons. And we sit and watch all this and it just don't register to us. Right here in the land of the living. We could be sitting here presumptuous. Thinking that we're all right and end up perishing in our own corruption. And shall receive a reward of unrighteousness as they that counted pleasure to ride in the daytime, spots they are, and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, and look what they do. They always beguile unstable so They always get the weak ones. Why don't everybody come and approach you, brother Scott, and have befriend, befriend you all this stuff like this? And so you can, Because he don't have a ground conducive for bacteria. You're not just going to come up here and just start talking sideways. <laughs> Why don't they talk to you? Come on, brother Brent, man. You know the word. Why don't they come talk to you like that? It's funny how they avoid you, isn't it? <laughs> for some of you, it's easy for somebody to come and spit in your ear. You could be the unstable soul that Satan is after next. See how much time the apostle spent on this? Look at this. I cannot tell you how many times we try to warn you of someone offended. And heart, they have exercised with covetous practices. And look at this. Blessed children, sanctified children, set apart children, holy children, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and have gone astray, fallen the way of Balaam, the son of Azor, who loved the wages of, or the payment for what? Unrighteousness. But was a rebuke for his iniquity, the dumbass speaking with a man's voice, forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water. 
I ain't got no anointing. None. Can't cast out one damn demon. Ain't never felt the Holy Spirit in a long damn time. When well, we're supposed to keep ourselves like a well water garden at all times. Clouds that are carried with the tempters to whom in the midst of darkness is reserved forever. And when they speak great swelling words of what? Vanity, they are lured through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who lived in error, while they promised them liberty. It's amazing how everybody gets all this liberty when they leave here. I mean, you had liberty when you came. You got liberty when you go. Why you always feel like you're under so much bondage when you leave? Everybody like they've been in a concentration camp. Yeah, we've been concentrating. <laughs> they themselves are what? Servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome, the same is bought into bondage. For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the master, Yahshua, the master Jesus Christ. Look at this. They are again entangled therein. Can you imagine you've been here all this time and then the, the very thing you escaped and the next thing you know you done got so wise in your fits. You become so keen that it moves you right back out here and then when you get back out there and start doing the same things that you used to previously do, it ain't even wicked no more. Because you done become so spiritual in justification. Now, you had a reprobate mind. Now, did not y'all promise to send people strong delusion? No, you know, you notice, he said this. For this cause, y'all were going to send him a strong delusion. Now, who sent the delusion? Who sent the lying spirit? You see what I'm saying? When you are off point, when you are off center, y'all has a program to send demonic spirits to tempt you, to entice you so that you can, so you can make sure that you're solidified in your belief and you can justify it just so that he can damn you. Turn over a second to Thessalonians and strong delusion teach. Are y'all listening to this? That's how y'all does. He turns men over to their, advice, their own de devices after so many times of prompting that you won't hear. You got it already? What is it, Chase? Second Thessalonians 2.15, what does it say? Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold to the, the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Are you in Second Thessalonians? Sir, where's the strong delusion? Verse 11. Start at verse 11. You already got it. Go ahead and read. And for this cause, I'm gonna start and in verse 10. Go to yeah, verse 10 for content. You know, we got to be in content because we don't want to be accused of just pasting and clipping verses together and then forming our own doctrine. Come on, and with all and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that is going to make it to glory through the pearly gates and going to sing in the promised land. Perish. Isn't that amazing? Notice, they're deceived in unrighteousness and it's already telling you what their destination is. They're going to perish. Read on. Because they received not the love of Ooh, the truth. Y'all hear that? I keep telling y'all it ain't enough just to know the truth. You got to love the truth. And see, that's a spirit in you that lusts the envy, that hate the truth. Yeah, it, it opposes, it despises it. You got to get to the point where you love the truth. And you know when you love the truth, right? When you lay down your life. Uh-oh. Y'all hearing this? 
free. That they might be saved. They don't even want to receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Come on. And for this cause, Yah shall send them strong delusion. That Watch they, this. Watch this. You remember that loving Yah. Trying to save you, don't want to be saved. So y'all going to sing your strong delusion. Read. That they should believe a lie. That they should do what? Believe a lie. Now the lies become the truth. Y'all don't understand how scary this is? Have you ever thought about Judas? Have you ever thought about him? Walking, talking, eating, sleeping, doing the miracles, watching the Messiah do the miracles, for taking feast days with the Messiah. What got into him? What ground did he present that a spirit could enter? Because the Bible said, and Satan entered into him. How do you know when Satan's entering into you? You don't know? Uh oh. That's why you have to keep yourself in the love of Yah. See, one day you may give a place to one offense, and that's the day that that demon enter in, and he becomes unmovable. Uh oh. See, one day you may tour around with sin. So you, you you've done shook yourself many times, like Gideon, like Samuel did, Samson did. I will shake myself like I did many times and go out and get them Philistines, but then your strength and your spirit is gone. Somebody gave you a haircut. Hmm? And I ain't talking about no haircut either. And you're thinking you're all of this and you no longer have any power and strength anymore because we don't lost the fear and reverence of Yah. In the fear of Yah, the beginning of wisdom. Now notice, this is what's being said right here. For this cause, because they don't want to believe the truth, Yah's going to make them, into, turn them into a lie. Read on. That they all might be damned. Whoa, 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 whoa. That all, is that plural? That means anytime one person is tainted, there's always going to be a few more that's going to come along. That's why you got to be careful of these little unsanctified parts. These little cliques. Uh-oh. Y'all said he's going to send a strong delusion so they believe a lie so that he can damn them. You think he's talking to the world? He's talking to the saints. Come on, read. Who believed not the truth? They don't believe the truth, but they what? But had pleasure. Pleasure in what? In unrighteousness. In unrighteousness. Just love unrighteousness. Come on. But we are bound to give thanks always to Yah for you. Brethren beloved of the master. Y'all hear that? I love giving thanks to Yah to those of you that are enduring and those of you that are putting forth the effort. Why should I give thanks to all those that turn aside? See, to me, that's betrayal. How are you going to sit up there and say, man, you love the brother and you with us to the end, then you're going to turn around and, and betray the brotherhood? What kind of code of honor and code of ethics are you operating under? I mean, the book warned us all, be not so soon shaken in mind. And don't be troubled by any spirit. We get shaken so fast and so easy. I heard, I heard what that, that man said. He said, I ain't never leaving you. And you go, that what you said, Ranger? He said, I ain't, I ain't going no damn well. You know how many people I heard say that? You know how many people done left that said that? His character different. He said, I ain't going nowhere. Elder Miss said, this is it. This is it for me. The 
Elder Rufus said, I don't give a damn what you do. I ain't going no damn well. You know the reason why people can talk like that? Because they know them that labor among them. There's a certain spirit. You know who's true. You know who means business. You know who ain't going to waver in the midst of adversity? Hallelujah. Wrath. Proverbs 14, 29. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. Folly, silly. One who despises wisdom, folly. See, folly, everybody thinks it's just a bunch of foolishness and and jesting and laughter and all this other stuff. No, somebody who actually despises wisdom. One who mocks when guilty. One who is quarrelsome. Can't even live life without having some type of conflict. The nature of Yah is peace. James 1.19, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of Yah. Wrath, anger, vengeance, indignation, natural disposition, the natural, the temper, the character, the movement, the agitation of the soul, impulse, desire, any violent emotion. Again, anger exhibited in punishment, henceforth punishment itself, or punishment inflicted by magistrates. Indignation, to be angry, to be vexed. Indignant, to be wroth. Be grieved, provoked anger, to be displeased and sad, injurious, to be evil, be evil, wicked to suffer hurt, spirit. We are fighting against the accuser of our brother. And the greatest weapon that Satan has in his arsenal is accusation. You know the reason why? Because it's much more easy to believe in accusation. You know the reason why? Because an accusation appeals to what you have in your spirit. Meaning it ain't hard for you to believe that. Because it's what you would do. Listen to what Yahshua said. And the spirit of Yah was upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me, look at this, look at this, look at this. I don't know why I did that. To heal the That's what, he's, that's what he said when the spirit of y'all on him, right? Watch, watch this. To preach deliverance to the, the people that are bound. Is that right? And the recovering of the sight to the blind. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. And then he goes on to say to preach the acceptable year of Yahweh. And then he closed the book. Because he had to stop. Now, look at Proverbs 10, 31. In other words, when we read all this, that's what we should be doing. The mouth of the just bringing forth wisdom, but the forward tongue shall be cut out. The tongues of the righteous knoweth what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. See, y'all always test his people. Always does. Y'all know y'all always test us? Always does. Y'all notice we ain't been called calling Brian Coward name? Because we ain't heard nothing from him. Where'd he come up with his offense? Out of nowhere and then lied. Simply amazing, huh? Didn't Yahshua say to the disciples, will you also leave me? Hmm? Didn't he say that? Will you also? See, right now you're clothing in your right mind. And some men will want to answer because it's conducive. It's convenient to answer because everybody else is answering. See, I can make the statement, I ain't going away. I ain't going to leave you. I ain't going to forsake you. But do you have that same word? Y'all understand how serious this thing is? 
Because you wait, as soon as crap hit the fan, guess who's going to try to show up? And you know the reason why we can't let them back in? We don't know what type of influences they've been around. You know, we ain't got time for all this deliverance and stuff. It's time, to, it's time to survive now. We don't know where you've been and what your associations has been. We can't, man, we can't afford to let you come in and destroy all this good. Because you were so selfish and didn't prepare. And you want us to all of a sudden, everything come down. You want us to let you come right on back in. No. We're going to save ourselves. Now, don't that offend some people? Exodus 20, 20. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for Yah is come to prove you that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. Deuteronomy 8, 2. Thou shalt remember all the way of Yahweh, your Elohim, led thee, these 40 years in the wilderness to do what? Can I, can, I, can I tell y'all that the whole sole purpose of us, y'all converting us and then spending the rest of our lives fighting this war is for the sole purpose of him humbling us to get us ready to receive the kingdom? Did you realize that the day you received the Holy Spirit, you wasn't ready for the kingdom? Man. You, ain't, you wasn't ready. He's spending the rest of your days perfecting you, getting you ready to receive the kingdom. Watch this. Because ain't nothing going into that kingdom that offends. And see, some of you right now, you still got offense on you. So you better thank the Father that Jesus ain't came yet. See, all this assuming. I mean, I remember the word says today is the day of salvation. Why in the hell wait for tomorrow or the next week or the next month or the next year of what you can do today? See the difference in mindset? And to prove thee and to know what was in your heart, whether you will keep his commandments or no, here we go with the accuser, Revelation 12, 10. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our Yah and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brother is cast down, which accused them before Yah day and night. Diablos, the one who slander, falsely accused. The prince of demons, Satan is. The author of evil, persecuting good men estranging mankind from Yah, enticing them to sin. See, that's what the accuser does. He entices the sin, afflicts them with diseases by means of demons who take possession of their bodies at his bidding. That's the reason why anytime you got an opportunity to get, get deliverance, boy, you better be getting it. You know, I realize, I, I know all of you that don't never get deliverance. I know every, I'm a shepherd, I know my sheep. Even when you don't think I know you, I know you. You're more afraid of getting the demons out <laughs> than you'd rather keep them in. The worst thing that deliverance can do is make you better. That's the worst thing. And then we have order. Like the plague. Demons have got you so punk, you're afraid to get them out because you feel like you won't be able to fear. You won't be able to feel. You won't even have any emotions if they wasn't there. I've had people tell me they don't want these spirits out because then they wouldn't have nobody to talk to. I tell them straight up, you keep them too. I ain't got no problem with them. Keep all you want. You just ain't going to be around us with them. According to this definition, demons afflict the bodies because of sin, and sin is the cause of diseases. Just like Job, Satan accused us before Yahweh. He tried to move him against us 
However, when the affliction, the temptation, the challenges come into our life, it's not Yah that is doing this, it's the Hasatan. And his demons doing this affliction. Now, you remember in 1 Kings 22, 20, and Yahweh said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall or die at Ramoth Gilead? Who? Who's going to do this? And one said on this matter, and another said on that matter, who's doing all this talking? And there came forth a... I know it's hard to believe, man, but these demons, man, they be, they be traveling back and forth. And stood before Yah and said, I will persuade him. In other words, I will enter into his thoughts and communicate to him after I have others to lie to him. So at what degree and in what area of your life are you submitted to Satan at his will? Oh, I'm going to serve another king. You got an area. That when that button is pushed, those spirits automatically start communicating. They're there. And Yahweh said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, you shall persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now, therefore, Yahweh have put a lying spirit. See, they're saying, Yah, given, you know, the King James is accrediting him because he's the one that sent him. Gave him permission. But it was the spirit that's in there, in the mouth of all these uh, the prophets and Yahweh has spoken evil concerning you. Now the characteristics of this is the enemy will always accuse or seek to blame others what they do and don't do. What they say and don't say. Manifestations of an accusing spirit. Easily offended. Exaggerating offenses and failures. Mistrust, gossip and innuendos, scapegoat mentality, self-condemnation. These are accusing spirits, self-accusation, not walking in and accepting the forgiveness of others. Manifestations, establishing non-biblical standards for others to obtain. Suicide. Blame others for your problems. Accusing spirits with emotional diseases. Nightmares and spirit, spiritual attacks. Anxiety attacks, panic attacks, and stress attacks. Stress and anxieties. Depression and broken heart. First thing he said now, he came to heal the broken heart. Self-accusation. Anybody ever heard this? You ugly. All women hear that. Ain't that right, women? Don't y'all hear that? Brother Rich is the only one I ain't never heard that. I still been on there since the day he said it. I ain't never heard I was ugly in my head. I look in the mirror and I don't see nothing. I don't hear nothing. Probably because ain't nothing there. But, <laughs> but women hear this all the time. I just want to keep telling women, women, man, Satan be worn with y'all. He be warring with God. Anybody look at that news, uh, this little video that this Tommy Lauren that works at Fox News put out and everybody's all over her? I look at her, I go, boy, that is one ugly woman. See, she looked like a, uh, your typical American Barbie doll, blonde hair and blue eyes, but boy, she is ugly. Then somebody found a picture with her with no makeup and damn it, confirmed my suspicions. It sure did. And she's over there making demands on the type of man that from this day forward, she's only going to entertain. And like when other people, she done done so many monkey double backflips. She's tired of flipping now. And she got standards. A whore with standards. I 
I said, this woman is up there talking and don't even know what she's saying. Look at the foot, man. It's so deep in her mouth. And she's proud. Anyway. Can't do anything right. Anybody ever had that one before? I can help you out. Everything I've ever tried, I've always failed at it first. I'll prove it to you. I didn't win my first Hot Wheels race at Tabernacles. I didn't win the second one either because Elder Rupert was accusing spirit. <laughs> as soon as he started all that, Manny, Manny, I said, oh, hell, it's fixed. <laughs> but I didn't win. Say, that just because you didn't do something right don't mean that you received the accusation of it. You don't fit in. No, you don't. When you first get here, you damn sure don't fit in. You, a matter of fact, you're like a sore thumb out of joint. We're all looking at you, and you don't even know what we're looking at. And you, you just think that you just come on in like a glove. If we're all six feet, you look like you're 15. Ain't that good to know? Y'all ain't never seen people come here, and they're all spiritual. Man, we said up here. You'll never amount to anything. Anybody ever heard that? You ever heard somebody tell you that? That was accusing spirit making a personal attack on you. You're a failure. See, looking for weakness in others, meaning gathering the sink and any and all to deflect others from seeing the real you. Trickery of the mind of the enemy is what he do. To get you to believe these thoughts from accusing spirits are your own. See, nobody ever told us all our life that this communication that goes on in our head and our mind is really demonic spirits. We never been told that until we started focusing on it until we came to a real Bible deliverance ministry. Then we start raging war, and then the next thing you know, man, these things are trying to fight to stay there. They have been in control for so long. So if you've been in this life 30 years and you've been listening to these spirits and stuff, so you think you're going to do one delivering ceremony and then blow in there and they all gone? I mean, I had my younger child cast spirits out of Pastor Dow. Surely Pastor Dow don't have no demonic spirits. Not him. She was scared as shit. Yeah, I got to get this spirit out now. You need to come on over here. You hear that? And some of you ain't got nobody doing nothing. It's sad. They said, I've been doing it 28 years and I'm still getting demons cast out of me, but you ain't got none. I must be the wickedest pastor that ever walked the face of planet Earth. I got to be the most wicked pastor that's ever walked the face of planet Earth. There's nobody more disgusting and detestable as Pastor Dow. I can promise you that. Look at him looking. If they can set up camp, they, the evil spirits, will have you to believe it's just you and part of your personality. You know me. I tell it like it is. Pride. You ever heard it before? All you're doing is communicating to those of us in the form. Look at that spirit talking. See, then when we get away from it, we go to each other and go, did you hear that? 
Did you hear that spirit? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I heard it. Sometimes we go, what did it say? Well, it said this. I, yeah, yeah, that's it. It ain't because there's a conspiracy and we're against you. It's just that we're making sure we're keeping ourselves abreast that we see the same thing. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of Yahweh which pass all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are whatsoever things are whatsoever things are whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Now ask yourself how many original thoughts you've ever had then. See, if you never have ever immersed yourself in just these two verses right here, you ain't even had one original thought that came from you. You've been controlled. You worried about everybody else controlling you but these demons. You're more fearful somebody else is going to have control over you but these spirits have been controlling you all this time. Well, I'm going to live my life. No, you ain't. The devil is living your life. You ain't never lived your life. I know it's rough, brother, but it's just the truth. Stronghold. When you agree with the thoughts and you meditate on them over and over again, the spirit of accusation will gain ground in your life, which will be a stronghold. Not every thought you have is your own. The fruit of accusation projects fears, jumbled thought patterns, causes chaotic thinking, accuses others of their sin. You know, I, I, you would think that that would be one area that people would be very fearful of. Even if you get in an argument or heated discussion, you'll think the, you will think that people will have so much intelligence that the last thing they would do is try to bring up somebody's sin that they have knowledge of. That is a very fearful area right there. Because what you're doing at that time is playing y'all. Mm. Therefore, thou inexcusable, old man, whosoever thou art that judges, for wherein thou judges, another thou condemnest thyself. For you that judges doest the same things. Many times we feel condemnation because of our own life is not lining up in the area we are condemning ourselves in. Accuser. Accusing spirits separate us from one another. That's the whole purpose of accusing spirits. It's also the mission of using spirits to separate us from ourselves. It's all about conquer and divide. And the end of it is, is to just separate us from Yah. Can we all agree that we are more powerful and we have more strength when we're around each other? And if we can agree with that, then we realize and know that when we are away from each other, we're not as strong. Isn't that true? Yeah, yeah straightway, we wasn't really missing nothing because it, when COVID-19 was really in this zenith, we were fine. Because we live here. We see each other all the time. I know as soon as we said, all right, y'all can come, boy, everybody was coming. I would have too. You understand what I mean? Think about this. How many people came and joined the ministry down in North Carolina just this past month or two? Eight people. They went from six at the beginning of the year to 30 right now. All in one place. You people should be very careful when you're talking with Elder Doug. You know how many spirits he talks to on a daily basis? Mm. 
You understand that? Because when people contact the ministry, he's the one that's directing them into different areas. And that means he's hearing all kinds of stuff. So guess what? Here you are going to get up and just start talking to Elder Doug and you not even, don't even know you're exposing yourself. I'm not saying don't say nothing to him. Because then you'll get to the point where I've been, I'll go over and say something because he's going to really see me now. I'm trying to give an example of what it's like when you are just sitting up there running your mouth and you're dealing with spiritual people. There's something to be said when you've been living this for 20-something years as opposed to you've been living this a month, a day, a year, or 10 years. All for the edification of the saints. Zechariah 7, 8 says, Then the word of Yahweh came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaker Yahweh of hosts, saying, Execute what kind of judgment? And show mercy and compassion every man to his... Now notice, this is a nature that we're supposed to have with each other. This is thus saith Yahweh. Y'all getting this? If he speaks one time, that means it's all the way across the board. Every man his brother and oppress not the nor the do y'all know the reason why they had to write that? You know the reason? Yeah. See, what happened is is that whenever a, a, a widow would lose her husband alright, the majority of the time they would have to turn to prostitution. And nobody would give a damn about the children. That's how cold-hearted Israel was. Not the other nations. Israel was. They were that cruel and cold-hearted towards them. To the point that the father had to keep speaking on this. As a matter of fact, it was even happening after the days of the Messiah. Get Acts chapter 6, teach Started verse 1. You would believe the nonsense. You would think that we, if we were reading this book, we would learn something. You know, the purpose of you reading this book is to be able to put these words in your heart. Put this lifestyle in your mind. And be a brand new people. The people that Yah is trying to create are new. Not to just get entertained by stories. Read. And in those days, and in those days, what happened? When the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. Now notice, here go on, here's a bunch of Greeks murmuring against the Hebrews. Mind you, we supposed to be ministers to the nations. Isn't that right? We supposed to be teaching the nations. What is the murmuring of the Greeks? against us, the Hebrews. Read. Because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. See? Yod already spoke over in Zechariah. He spoke about it in the law. And it's still going on. Israel is still ignoring it. The one thing the straightway does is anytime there's a widow, we make sure Anybody remember Elder Felix? Yes. Remember, raise your hand remember Elder Felix. Elder Felix was a damn good elder. All right? Because he was up there in the New Jersey area. And when he was getting ready to pass, I had a talk with his wife. I said, elders are elder. And we're going to take care of you, or the you and the children. And that's not going to be taken care of the way you want to be taken care of. Because you ain't going to stay in this city if we taking care of you. We're going to move you somewhere. You and the children. You're going to be taken care of. You're going to never have to work a day in your life. Name another pastor that will say that to somebody. Huh? And then if there's any of the communities I would have sent her to or homestead, they would have took care of her and gladly taken them in. His wife and his three children. And wouldn't even murmur or complain. And you people out there think you got the, you fancy yourself as our judge? 
and you ain't even doing even a tenth of this? Here's another nation murmuring against us because we're neglecting the widows. See how hard and cold and cruel we are as a people? I see her popping up every once in a while on, <clears throat> excuse me, on Facebook. I wonder what kind of world she got in her now. See, now that offering is not even open no more. You had your chance and you turned it down. I don't know of another ministry on this earth, I don't know, I don't know them all, that would do that. Gee, you are a widow with three children, and we're telling you flat out that you don't have to work. We're going to take care of you and your children all the days of your life. And we're doing this because it's right to do. It's law. That's the way we're supposed to be as a people. And you're going to choose the world over Israel? That let you know where she was at when her husband was here then, don't it? That's a pure sign of where she was at when her husband was alive. Remember I told y'all you stage playing women, you act the part. Bobby, would you take that up? If, if Freeman passed away, I told you we're going to take care of you the rest of your days, your life. You, you going back home to mama? She's like, oh, I'm staying here. I'm going to hell. You think about that. Jordan, something happened to Victor. You going home to mama? Read. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of Yah and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among ye, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. So what they done done is they, they let us know that they had no structure that was set up. But you had to put the right kind of man in place, though. Honest report, full of the Holy Spirit. Huh? Because right now we can't do it. We too busy. We, we too busy. We, we got to get this word out. We got traveling to do. We got we to gotta set up assemblies. We got to teach elders. We got to ordain elders. We, we got the word we got to do. Y'all here geographically located right here. So we're going to anoint and appoint someone right here over this business. Because we got the damn heathens out there accusing us. And they telling the truth. We should call this living Bible preaching. Because you don't read it like this, do you? Read. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Y'all hear that? Come on. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Hey, y'all hear what Stephen was, right? And y'all know what happened to him, don't you? Yeah, they killed our brother. See what they're going to do to everybody that's full of faith in the Holy Spirit? And even then, he had love for his brother and said, you know what? Man, look at this, Father. They don't, they don't even know what they're doing either. They have no clue. Amazing, isn't it? See, Satan's spitting in some of y'all here. You don't even know you're in the right place. He moved you all the way from California just so you can spend 10 years here and then kick the traces and go to Australia. You, I'm going to upgrade. Upgrade to what? Now, 
Y'all ain't never known how different this type of ministry is as opposed to all the rest of them? We get down to the nitty gritty. We get in there. We get in there and we, we do that precision circumcision in the heart. We, we say them words that everybody else is scared and afraid of saying because, see, out there, they're afraid to lose you because their job is to get more bodies in the seats. Because the more money comes, even if they're giving a dollar a week, it's better than nothing. We are the direct opposite. We don't care if he's sitting in the seat or not. Because if y'all didn't bring you here, we don't want you. Simple enough, isn't it? See, out there they play blackmail. And they, check this out. Uh, We're going to vote in a pastor. How in the hell are you going to do that? And the pastor can't do nothing unless he got the usher board, the deacon board, and the ironing board to make the decision. What kind of ministry is that? When are we going to just let the men who are filled with the spirit of Yah and fear him, and when Yah calls someone to it, let them make the choices and decisions? Boy, ain't you glad you ain't got a rule two fronts? Community in Texas? I say, good, bro, Greg can take that over. Oh, boy. Whew. Maybe you can keep your hair from a little bit longer, huh? Hey, Jesus. But y'all seeing this, right? Don't imagine evil against your brother in your heart. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Let me say this. We are a tribe. Your true brothers are those who belong to this tribe. Y'all get that? And you got to prove yourself in this tribe every day. See, there are too many voices that walk and speak contrary to this tribe. Even in the days of the apostles, if they had a matter, they would go up to Jerusalem, where Peter and James and John were, and conferred with them. People do not do this today. Y'all led you the straight way, then he knew what he was doing. He knew, notice, notice that this is called straight way, not your way. Watch this, all right? If you head of a home fellowship, head of a community, is it a bed of roses? And it's so, so simple to lead people. No, come on, man. We Israel. You mean tell me people are difficult? God, you got to be. No. Brother Chris, people are difficult? No. No, every one of them got a, a, a spirit of depression that comes over their face. Y'all ought to see it, man. You try to deal with it, they can't even, they just. Oh. Yeah. Slumping, slumbering. Come on, man. Be of good cheer. If you were in that position, you would be experiencing the same thing. It ain't easy dealing with people. But y'all got people in front of you for your edification, for your exhortation, and your comfort. If anyone speaks anything contrary to what we speak and teach, let them be a curse. Ain't that what Paul said then? Our life is on this place, theirs or not. Galatians 1, 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into a grace unto another gospel, which is not another. 
But there'll be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Messiah. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other message unto you than that which we, well, who Paul think he is? Talking to the Galatians like that. He's trying to protect the Galatians from anybody else coming in and saying anything contrary to what he's teaching. Ain't that what he's saying? But though we are an angel, he even throw an angel from heaven. Preach any other message unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. Accursed means an anathema. A religious ban. Excommunicato. Excommunicated. A single person accursed an anathema. As we have said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other message unto you than that ye have received, let him be a... That's why if you hear people talking anything contrary to the way that the ministry and the spirit of the vainest ministry is going, let them be a curse. You know how easy it is to come up with new revelation, new knowledge and all that other shit? That's easy to do. It's a hell of a lot harder leading a whole field of sheep though. And trying to keep them in one accord in one vein, that's rough. Oh, you know what? Uh, Pastor Dow just ain't spiritual enough yet, he, he, but he'll get there. Well, pray for me then. Pray for me. I don't have no problem there. I don't have no problem admitting I ain't spiritual enough. That's why I strive every day. I'll get there. But you know, there's a spiritual law out there that if you're ever going to be anything in this world, the, the, this spiritual law works like this. You are never, ever to outshine the master. Look at him look you. Man, when I was on the Bishop Mulberry, man, I was doing everything I could to support him. I would. So much so to the point that the elders and deacons were getting mad at me for supporting him. Can you believe it? Then it came time, you know, because um, I would lay hands on people. People receive the Holy Spirit. I would lay hands on people. People would... <laughs> People would get free of demons and all kind of stuff. And pe the people could recognize it. And they would just start coming to me. You know, because we did a prayer line. So whenever the bishop line was full, then they would come over to me. And I asked the bishop, I said, they, is it okay? Because they're, they're coming to me. The elder doubt, let, let God use the gift. I said, okay. I said, if there's anything more than waiting, I can handle something. I'm, they're coming over to you. I'm sending them. I just didn't go out there and just start doing shit. I'm a man under authority. I, when you, so you, you see, you really learn that when you're in a discipline in the military. Though. You, you really learn it then. You didn't, I didn't have that envy in me. I, I wish I would have. No! Unreal. Did y'all listen to the broadcast last night? Should have learned something. That was a good broadcast. Because we got personal. Well, that was kind of fun, Pastor Dow. It, it may have been fun, but you need to listen again. For do I persuade men or y'all? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of God. Messiah. So you got to ask yourself the question. We're going to talk about a lot here today. A whole lot. I hope, I truly hope these things are seeking deep down in our hearts. Because we need a hell of a lot more perfection. Glory to the King. Uh, we got a baptism to do. Um, 
Let's say 245. 245. How many people getting baptized? Raise your hand. That's always funny to me when they know they're getting baptized and they always turn their head and look to see. <laughs> How many people getting baptized? <laughs> it's, it's a personal question directed at the person. Do you need help? Do you need encouraged to know if you need to get baptized or not? <laughs> man, bro, Chris, man, my house flooded. Yeah, you remember that, that dozer work down there? That swelled. I don't know what happened, boy, but it went the other way. <laughs> Let Nelly show you the video. <laughs> Chris said he'd do it like this. That woman called me yesterday and I, I've been trying to call you. I do, should we, do you want to know something? No, we don't need them all. Come get it. I said, but don't come tomorrow. We got Shabbat. And besides, you can't use it anyway because it's all wet and muddy. And, um, he said, well, I'm going to go ahead and close it out today. He says, okay, so uh, we, that, that's going to be a, a $980 for that. That's a whole oh, wait a minute now. I said, it was three weeks, we couldn't even use the damn thing. I'll close it out for the next day. You, you should need to close it out because I ain't paying that. If I get an inkling they're going to try to charge that, I'll cancel their credit card today. See how people are crazy? Stupid crazy. Huh? All the, all the, all the little bitch. I thought I did already. How long have we been having it over? It's crazy. You talk to men, right? And then when it's time to, to close out something, the first thing they do is put a woman on the phone. You've been talking to men this whole time. Then they want to put a skirt on the phone. I ain't offended. Not saying, I just, when you're dealing with business like that, because sure, you, be, you want to be talking to men, don't you? Because then sometimes I have to talk to these women the way I talk to men. All right, let's stay in Israel. I got this little thing to go up there. Um, we got to get out here early. It's a four-hour drive, man. That means we got to get out here early and we got to, we at least got to leave early enough that we can eat a Cracker Barrel. <laughs> got to get Cracker Barrel, man. Yeah, country bread, man, Cracker Barrel, man. Cracker Barrel, the spot. Hmm? They slow too lately. They be taking forever to cook some stuff now. Co everything's COVID-19, everything. All right, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for everything that we've heard, our minds has heard. We hope you and pray that these sins seek deep, deep down in our hearts. Praise for the edification, exaltation, the comfort of Yah's people. We thank you, Father, for all these truths. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of thy heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Yah, my strength, my redeemer, dismissed in the beautiful name of Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Shabbat shalom, King coming.